Going into the season, the Lakers were one of the favorites to win the championship. Fast forward to today, and the story looks very different. With the big three in LeBron, AD, and Westbrook, the Lakers should be powering through the Western Conference, but this has simply not been the case. Let's dive into where the Lakers are today and why they are struggling so badly. As of January 10th, the Lakers are currently ranked 22nd in offense and 14th in defense. These rankings are a huge downgrade from when they were a championship team, especially their defense. To put this into perspective, the Lakers are ranked 3rd in defense during their 2020 championship year and 1st last season in 2021. So the question is, what happened and why are they so bad this year? To answer that, let's start with the roster change the Lakers made in their offseason. During the offseason last year, the Lakers decided to give up some of their key players in Montrez Harrell, Kyle Kuzma, Dennis Schroeder, and KCP. In addition, they also gave up their big man in Mark Gasol and replaced him with DeAndre Jordan. In doing so, they managed to acquire players such as Westbrook, Camarlo Anthony, and Malik Monk through a combination of trades and free agency signings. Initially, this sounded like a welcome change for the Lakers to form a big three, along with solid veteran players, but what they didn't realize was how much they would give up on in their overall defense and chemistry. The new boys in Westbrook, Carmelo DeAndre, although very experienced players, are still struggling to find the consistency that used to come naturally with the Lakers' old squad and is really hurting them defensively. To give you an idea of what I mean, take a look at all the players who have played at least 58 games last season. These eight players all have high defensive ratings while playing for almost the entirety of the season. Notice anything else? That's right, seven of those eight players are no longer with the Lakers and only one of them remain, which is THT. This is a huge problem because these key players are the very ones who contributed to making the Lakers the number one team in defense in terms of their stats, hustle, and chemistry. By trading away these defensive-minded players, they dramatically downgraded their team compared to previous seasons. And it's not just their defense that is struggling. Currently, the Lakers are barely hanging above the 500 mark, and the reason starts with their new star point guard, Russell Westbrook. On paper, Westbrook seems to be doing what he does best as a triple-double machine. He's currently averaging 19.6 points, 8.1 assists, and 7.9 rebounds while shooting 45% from the field. These are solid stats, so how can he be a problem? The problem starts with the fact that he fails to recognize that a player's impact is more than what it is on paper. In a post-game interview, he thinks that he is playing perfectly fine and that people expect him to average 25, 15, and 15, which is not normal. Take a look. I think people are expecting me to, to have 25, 15, and 15, which that is not normal. After watching this interview, it's clear that Westbrook doesn't get the issues at hand. He's trying to set an unrealistic expectation on himself that no one put on him in the first place. The Lakers aren't asking him to be a triple-double machine. They simply want the man to step up when they need him to by running the offense while playing smart. Keyword, smart. So far this season, he hasn't been able to show that he's capable of doing this on a consistent basis. If we look closely, Westbrook is terribly inefficient at his job and it shows in his shooting percentage, his box plus minus, and his extremely high turnover rate compared to the rest of his team. He's currently averaging 4.6 turnovers, which has been costly for the Lakers. Take a look at their game against the Suns where he first does this along with this, then this. In total, he ended the game with nine turnovers. It's not just one bad game that he had either. It's happening throughout the season and has put the Lakers all the way at the second spot for the most turnovers of any team in the league. These turnovers don't just come from him not taking care of the ball either. It also comes from him making a conscious decision to take four shots. His strong suit has always involved being a relentless finisher in the paint where he can go to work. However, this season he's been settling for highly contested jump shots that are extremely difficult to make. Just look at this drive where he goes baseline only to chuck up a wild shot behind the backboard. On these plays, you can see that he's also taking heavily contested shots in the mid-range. The worst part is, he's doing it at the three-point line too. Westbrook tends to make these mistakes all too often and is costing the Lakers badly. As the third all-star in the team, Russell Westbrook is at the very least expected to fill in the shoes as a leader when LeBron or AD are out. With AD missing at least a month with an MCL sprain, the Lakers have no choice but to lean on their two other stars in Westbrook and LBJ, especially in clutch moments. Somehow, even in his 19th season, LeBron is still managing to pull off clutch shots in the fourth quarter to bail out the Lakers. But the same can't be said about Westbrook. In key moments, Russell Westbrook has been found wanting this season. Let's remember this is the same player who would ignore Kevin Durant and OKC to take difficult shots when the game was on the line. Brody, help us out, man. We just don't get it. 
His inability to close out games has cost the Lakers their game against the Nets on December 25th and again against the Grizzlies on the 29th. Let's take a look at this play against the Nets first. With under 30 seconds left on the clock, Westbrook misses what is supposed to be a free dunk in the lane. Next, we see he does something very similar against the Grizzlies, where he misses a wide open layup to help close out the game. This very layup ended up being one of the key reasons why they lost such a close game against the Grizzlies. If the Lakers are going to be a championship contending team, Westbrook has got to start stepping up in the fourth quarter, otherwise they're going to be in for a rough season. Needless to say, it would be unfair to completely blame Westbrook for all of the Lakers' struggles because it isn't just him. Anthony Davis has also turned out to be a huge liability for the Lakers. Although his general numbers are up from last season, Davis has been out for more games than the Lakers can afford this season. As their defensive anchor and one of their primary scorers on offense, the Lakers desperately need him to stay healthy. Last season, we saw just how detrimental it was to have AD get injured during their playoff run, where they got knocked out in the first round by the Phoenix Suns. If Davis can't stay healthy this season, a similar situation in the playoffs can very well happen. Considering the Lakers traded away practically their whole young core in 2019 for AD, it's clear that the Lakers are banking largely on Davis to bring them home another championship. There's no doubt that he can do just that when he's healthy since AD is currently averaging 23.3 points, 9.9 .9 rebounds, and 2.9 assists while adding 2 blocks per game. These are all-star caliber stats, but AD has a couple of glaring weaknesses this season in his 3-point and free throw percentages. He's currently shooting an atrocious 17% from the 3-point line and 72% from the free throw line, both marking career lows for Davis. If the Lakers are going to be a top team, they'll need to make sure AD manages to stay healthy and active. Davis also isn't the only one they need to stay healthy. LeBron is currently playing his 19th season in the NBA and is somehow still averaging a ridiculous 28.9 points, 7.4 rebounds, and 6.6 .6 assists, which beats out his average during his Miami days. Like Davis, there's no doubt that LeBron can absolutely ball out while he's on the court, but the problem is making sure that he manages to actually stay healthy to do so. Last year, he only played 42 games, which is the lowest in his entire career, and this season he's already missed 12 games. LeBron himself knows how important it is to stay healthy, and that's exactly why he's making a business decision to make plays like this, where he doesn't even contest the jump ball. That aside, the Lakers really need to get LeBron some more help, and this problem stems from the fact they simply don't have enough depth in the forward position. Take a look at their current rosters, where they have eight guards and only five forwards. Of the five forwards, Ariza and Johnson have each played just seven games. Bazemore, on the other hand, is really more like a shooting guard and has only played 24 games. Knowing this, Carmelo and THT are the only real forwards out there helping LeBron at the forward position. We get that players like Westbrook, AD, and LeBron thrive off of guards who shoot from the outside to create space in the paint, but the lack of depth that they have at the forward position is concerning, especially in the absence of LeBron. The upcoming trade deadline is an important one, and if the Lakers are going to get some more help, they should do it sooner rather than later. Ultimately, the Lakers are still championship contenders. If they can find a way for Westbrook to fit in better with the current team while keeping their key players in LeBron and AD healthy, there is no doubt that they have the potential for a deep playoff run. Let's just hope that they figure things out soon or they're going to be in for a rough season. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to smash that like button and subscribe if you loved it as it would help us tremendously. What do you guys think about the Lakers' current situation? Let us know in the comments below.